In this video, we take advantage of the SVD theory that we already know to dramatically compress data with a hands-on Python demo. Back now in our Linear Algebra 2 notebook, we're in the image compression via SVD section, which follows immediately on the heels of the singular value decomposition section. All right, so here, this section features code adapted from Frank Cleary's. Thank you very much, Frank. We start off by importing the image method from the Python imaging library. And this will allow us to fetch a photo from the internet and then use that image method to open the image as a plot right within our Jupyter Notebook. And this image is of Oboe, the mascot of the Machine Learning Foundation series with my book, Deep Learning Illustrated. So let's convert this image to grayscale so that we don't have to deal with the complexity of multiple color channels. And great, now we have that black and white image. And the reason why this is helpful here is because if we want to have a full color red, green, blue image like this one, you need three color channels, red, green, and blue to represent this image. And yeah, that layer of complexity is beyond the scope of what I wanted to cover in this Machine Learning Foundation series. The point is to show you an application of a singular value decomposition. And the easiest way for me to do that was to use a matrix that just has one layer. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a three tensor. It's just a two-dimensional matrix where we have uh, 4,000 odd rows in our matrix and 3,000 odd columns. And at every element in that matrix, there is a number that indicates how dark the point should be, how dark that element should be, or in imaging terms, how dark that pixel should be. So now that we have our image, let's convert the image data into a NumPy matrix which doesn't impact the image data. It just brings it into a format that we can work with uh, nicely in NumPy. And then given that, we can calculate the SVD of the image. So we're using the same SVD method from the NumPy linear algebra module that we used in the preceding section. So because in the preceding section, we were using the SVD method on a very small matrix with three rows and two columns, the computation to decompose it into singular vectors and singular values was instantaneous. But because we now have an image with a matrix rather with 4,000 rows and 3,000 columns, it takes a few moments, but in Google Colab with the beefy cloud compute server that we have access to, it, yeah, doesn't take too long. It's done now in real time. So as eigenvalues are arranged in descending order in the diag lambda matrix, remember that from the eigen decomposition segment earlier in this machine learning foundation series. So just as eigenvalues are arranged in descending order, so too are singular values, at least by convention. And so by being arranged in this descending order in the matrix D in our singular value decomposition formula. So we have, recall that formula from earlier, it is right here. So that matrix D that consists of a diagonal matrix with singular values along the main diagonal. We can represent that either as a matrix D or you can represent it as diag of some vector. In this case, we're calling the vector sigma. Thus, with this convention in place, where the singular values are arranged in descending order, this means that the first left singular vector of u, as well as the first right singular vector of v, may represent the most prominent feature of the image. So it will tend to contain the most relevant aspects of your data. So we can use that to reconstruct the image 
using only that first singular value, the first left singular vector of u, and the first right singular vector of v. So that's what we're doing here. We're grabbing the first left singular vector, the first right singular vector, and the first singular value. And we're multiplying them by each other in the same way that if we had more than just single values and single vectors, we would use matrix multiplication like we did here to multiply u times d times v transpose. All right, so that allows us to reconstruct the image using a very small amount of data. And we can plot that image out. And all right, I admit with one set of singular vectors and one singular value, this doesn't really look like a reconstructed image. But we can add additional singular vectors to improve the image quality. So I have a for loop here that iterates over 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 singular vectors per iteration. So yes, when we had just one singular vector, uh, we didn't see very much. But what happens when we use two sets of singular vectors and singular values? Well, now you can just kind of start to make out that my puppy oboe is here on the left, but you'd only be able to make that out if you already knew what the original image was. Then as we add in even more singular vectors, so all of a sudden four, okay, maybe someone would start to think that this was a dog or a baby bear or something. Once we have eight singular vectors, okay, a dog really does start to come into view, maybe even the book. 16, we have a fuzzy dog in a fuzzy book. 32, it's starting to get pretty decent. And by 64 singular vectors and singular values, we have successfully reconstructed the image with a far smaller data footprint. So with 64 singular vectors, yeah, the image is reconstructed quite well. And you could keep going and try 128, 256. I'm going by powers of two because that will be a significant impact as you double the number of singular vectors. But let's say with 64. 64, I'd say, was good enough for compressing this image. And let's look at how much smaller the data footprint is relative to the original image. So the original image had 4,032 rows and 3,024 columns. So the full representation has 1.2, no, has 12.2 million individual elements, individual data points. In contrast, our SVD reconstruction with just 64 singular values has 64 left singular vectors, and each one of those left singular vectors has 4,032 elements in it, has a length of 4,032, and that corresponds to the number of rows in our original image, and that follows along with theory that we talked about in the beginning of the SVD section, where U is an M by M matrix corresponding to the number of rows in A, and V is an N by N matrix corresponding to the number of columns of A. Right, so that's where these numbers are coming from. So we have, yes, 64 left singular vectors. Each left singular vector has a length. 4032. We have 64 singular values. And then we have 64 right singular vectors. And each one of those right singular vectors has a length of 3024, corresponding to the number of columns of our original matrix. So in total, we have 452,000 data points. And that is far fewer than our full representation it's 3.7% as many data points required for our compressed image relative to our original image. So yeah, pretty impressive, right? Alongside images, you can use singular vectors 
for dramatic lossy compression of other matrices, any data of media files, certainly we could compress with this approach. And so this will be helpful to you in machine learning because you can shrink down the inputs into your model, often meaning that you can substantially reduce the compute required to train a model as well as make a model more efficient in a production system. SVD is very cool, right? I bet you never thought linear algebra could be so cool. Well, hold on to your seats because what's up next is even crazier. In the next video, we'll build upon the SVD theory that we've now covered to learn about pseudo inversion, which can almost like magic, solve for unknowns in systems of linear equations. To be sure not to miss the next tutorial in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. You can follow me on Twitter too, if that's your social medium of choice. See you next time.